One of the things that I loved about your book, me, myself, and Bob, is that you were really transparent and humble in that book. And you were saying that the, the, the veggie tail idea, it wasn't just a hobby. It wasn't a job. It was the way you were going to serve God. And, and all that kind of fell apart eventually. But where did that dream come from? Um, uh, well, I grew up in a, in a family, probably a, a, a high functioning Christian ministry family, you know, where my, my great grandfather was the first non-denominational radio preacher in America who went on, went on the radio in 1923 and preached every Sunday morning, uh, until 1964 when he died. So he started a Bible and missionary conference. I was there every year. We had mission. One of my great uncles was, uh, the first uh, white person to enter a whole section of Irian Jaya, bringing the gospel to cannibals, actual cannibals. I feel like know, I'm so. reading like Hebrews 11 right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My grandparents, you know, were friends with A.W. Tozer and Billy Graham. And my mom remembers at eight years old sitting on the couch in her grandpa's house on the, on the couch in between Bob Jones Jr. and Bob Jones Sr. Really? Sitting on either side of her. When that had she to was be eight. scary and scarring, was it? Yeah, she didn't for an eight year old. Well, it was probably weird. Yeah, uh, but she didn't really know what she was sitting next to. So that's my family heritage. Um, and so I kind of just I kind of grew up, you know, thinking, well, what am I going to do? You know, what's my big thing going to be for for God? Because that's kind of how you got praise, you know, in our family was you did something big for God. And that's, I didn't want to go to Erie and Jaya. I was a shy <laughs> kid. I liked playing with super eight millimeter cameras and puppets in the basement. I didn't really see how that translated well into jungle ministry. So I, yeah, when MTV turned on, I was a sophomore in high school. And I remember, you know, watching all these experimental, really fun music videos that people were starting to make using this new, new art form. And then also noticing the value messages in the videos and thinking, okay, this is fantastic artistically and creatively. I love what these filmmakers are doing in terms of what the values being communicated to young Americans are. I'm very concerned about this. I wonder if maybe that's my big thing, if that's what I'm supposed to do is use technology to promote um, Sunday school messages instead of you know the world's messages how many how many christian ministries are inspired by mtv probably not many oh, at least a couple i'm gonna assume i don't know but yours was at least in part or you got a vision for how you could use that technology to share a different message and of course that took off and you saw a lot of success i think a lot of families like mine out there really benefited from those stories it all kind of fell apart. And if you want to know more about the story, you can read the book where you're super transparent. It's called uh, Me, Myself, and Bob. And it's worth a read, that's for sure. And it's funny, too. It's not just, oh, no, look what happened to his ministry. No, it's that's a great read. Bad. It's a great read. It's, I really liked know. it. Uh, but but yes. in that book, you speculate that that God gives people dreams and then takes them away to see if they really wanted God or if they just wanted what God would give them. And when your dream got taken away, you, you say you're asked this question, what kind of God would stand back and watch a dream, a good dream for ministry and impact fall apart? How, how do you answer your own question? Uh, yeah, I, I answer it by looking back at my life and recognizing how miserable I had become chasing that dream. I was convinced, you know, I, I decided I was going to be the Christian Walt Disney. That was my dream. I'm going to be the Christian Walt Disney. I'm going to build theme parks and hotels and, you know, and I'm going to save the world's children from the evils of Hollywood. It is my destiny. Um, and when it actually starts working, you know, it actually starts working, then it clearly, well, this is clearly God working. And so I need to keep, I need to not mess this up. So I need to work even harder. You know, I need to work harder. I need to, and I need to worry a lot that I'm <laughs> going to mess helps. this up. That yes, always that helps. always helps because God has given me this amazing vehicle and I'm in the driver's seat for whatever the reason. And the worst thing I could possibly do is drive it off the road into a ditch. 
you know, and how disappointed my grandparents would be, how disappointed God would be. Everyone would be worse off if I mess this up. And I put myself under so much stress that I ended up in the hospital with pericarditis, a viral infection in the lining of your heart. I got shingles at the age 30, you know, from stress. Um, and so after it fell apart, I looked back and, and realized that, that God let it die, not because he didn't love me, but because he loved me so much and wanted to save me from myself. Um, cause he never called me to be Walt Disney. He called me to be Phil, to be a child of God, yeah. you know, but I was too impatient. We're often too impatient to figure out who God made us to be. So we pick someone else and say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the next you know, fill in the blank. I'm going to, my wife wanted to be the next Sandy Patty. I wanted to be the next Walt Disney, or you want to be the next Rick Warren, or you want to be the next Bill Hybels, or you want to be the next, you know, they're like, no, no. Who does God want me to be? God wants me to be Phil. And I have to shut up, slow down and sit still long enough for him to show me who that is. 